Today I am going to give you a lecture on inner product space. This is the lecture number 11, inner product space part 1. Before we start inner product space, I would like to introduce you with the graph uh, group theory. In group theory, uh, first of all, we start with uh, group, and group is an algebraic structure having a one binary operation and possesses four important properties. The very first property is closure property, the second one is associative property, the third one is identity, and the fourth one is inverse. Means if we consider any non empty set having a one binary operation and which possesses this four important property that non-empty set is known as group and if we introduce one more additional property to, to the group like uh, commutative property then such groups are known as abelian group and if we enlarge or introduce a few more property to the group it becomes a ring like uh, usually ring is denoted by r plus dot where r is a non-empty set with two binary operation, addition and multiplication. First property which we require for ring is R plus must form an abelian group. Second one is R must plus associative property for multiplicative operation and the third important property is distributive laws distributive law holding or is in R so any non-empty set having two binary operation addition and multiplication with these three property is known as ring the first property is R must form a abelian group and for abelian group for additive operation so this R must possess an identity element associated closer property associative property inverse property and commutative property all five properties for additive operation and just one associative property for multiplicative operation and the third property which is distributive means R must possess left and right distributive law must hold in R so any non empty set R with these three property is called ring. Next definition is field. See F plus dot where F is any non empty set with two binary operation addition and multiplication if F form an abelian group for additive operation and F also form an abelian group for multiplicative operation means F must possess 5 abelian, abelian group property for additive operation as well as for multiplicative operation and finally distributive law must hold in non empty set F this video so any non empty set F having these three property is called field there is an alternative definition for field uh, a commutative ring with unity whose every non zero element such as a multiplicative inverse is also known as field this is another other definition for field and after this, I would like to give you a definition of vector space. See, this vector space is a prerequisite for um, inner product space because inner product space consists of uh, consists of vector space with some additional structure or uh, features. So, before we start inner product space, I would like to explain you this vector space definition. 
and vector space is usually denoted by V bracket F, where V is any non empty set and this capital F stands for fill. As we know that fill form an abelian group for additive as well as multiplicative operation and it always was a distributive law. In order to define vector space, we require a certain field because every vector space defined over a certain field. Your field may be a uh, real field which consists of real numbers or it may consist of complex numbers also. So the vector space is usually defined over a, either over a real field or a complex field. Every member of V is known as vectors and which we usually denote by alpha, beta, gamma and elements of F are usually denoted by small alphabets A, B, C and these A, B, C's are known as scalar so elements of F are scalars while elements of V are vectors now we come to the actual definition of vector space V is a non-empty set consists of vectors over the field of scalars A, B, C then V is said to be a vector space if V possess three important properties the very first V must construct a Bayesian group for additive operation for vector addition V must form an Abelian group and for Abelian group again we require closer property, associative property identity element, inverse property and finally commutative property all these property for additive operation and the second important property is scalar multiplication this V is always used for scalar multiplication that is if you choose any arbitrary vector alpha which belongs to V and some scalar quantity A which belongs to F then this implies this A into alpha which is again a vector quantity a scalar multiplied with the vector and this resulting vector A alpha again belongs to V this property is called a scalar multiplication and that's why this V is used for scalar multiplication because the scalar multiple of vector alpha A alpha again belongs to V and the third important property which includes four property like for every alpha beta which belongs to V and for every AB scalars which belongs to F we must have alpha plus beta when we multiply with A gives us A alpha plus A beta and if you operate A plus B over alpha the A alpha plus B alpha this is the second property the third property when we operate A B over alpha it is equal to A times of B alpha and the final property 1 dot alpha is always alpha for every alpha which belongs to B and this unity element 1 always belongs to our field F so any non empty set which possesses two compositions one is called addition of vector and the other one is called uh, scalar multiplication so whenever our non empty set B construct a abelian group for additive operation and it is used for scalar multiplication and if it possesses all these properties four properties then such VF is called a vector space now, now we come to uh, inner product space Field K and particularly in this chapter we restrict our field 
to be either, either a real fit or a complex fit. And in case one, we call V a real vector space whenever it is defined over a real fit. And whenever your vector space is defined over a complex fit, at that time such vector space is called complex vector space. So it depends on which field we define our vector space. Now, this is the definition for inner product. Let us consider the vector space V over a field K. This K represents the field. This K field may be a real or a complex. Then suppose to each pair, let us consider two vectors U and V, which belongs to our vector space V. There exists a scalar which is denoted by this symbol and this is known as an uh, inner product of two vectors U, V and this is always member of K being a scalar quantity. So for every, each pair of vector U, V belongs to V, there is assigned a scalar which belongs to K and this mapping is called an uh, inner product if this V in, the, in V, if it satisfies the following exams, means if V satisfies this four, uh, this three, three properties, I1, I2 and I3, these are the important property. So first property is inner product of AU1 plus VU2 comma V is equal to A times of inner product of U1 comma V plus B times of inner product of U2 comma V. The second property is inner product of two vectors UV is equal to conjugate of inner product of V comma U. And the third property, inner product of vector U, U comma U is always greater than equal to zero. And particularly it is zero whenever our vector itself is zero means if and only if uh, inner product of U comma U is zero, if and only if U is equal to zero. This is vice versa means if inner product of some vector is zero, then this implies the vector is zero or vector zero. This shows its inner product remains zero. So a mapping is called an inner product in V if it satisfies these three examples: well, I one, I two, and I three. Where U V and U one, U two, these are the vector quantities. While A B, these are the scalar quantity which belongs to our field K inner product space. So basically inner product space consists of vector space with the additional feature of uh, inner product. Any vector space with inner product property is called inner product space. And here one more definition, uh, norm or a length of any vector u. Let us consider a vector u, then its norm is usually denoted by this symbol. And according to this norm of u, this non-negative real number norm of u is called norm or a length of u and with the help of this formula norm of u is equal to a positive square root of uh, inner product of u comma u. This is a non-negative real number and which is used for length of u and for norm of u. A real inner product space is sometimes known as Euclidean space and the complex inner product space is sometimes known as unitary uh, inner product space. Now we discussed few uh, inner product spaces over the Rn or Cn, where Rn represents the Euclidean space with uh, n dimension and the Cn represents the unitary n space. So let us consider the first uh, dot product in Rn. Consider the dot product in R to the power n which represent a Euclidean n space and u and v are any two vectors which belongs to our vector space and their product we define because here u represent a i where i varying from 1 to n because our vector space consists of n dimension r to the power n so our u consists of a1, a2, a3, dash dash and it goes up to an and similarly our vector v which is again a member of our vector space which consists of v1, v2, v3 dash dash up to bn so we define our dot product u dot v as a1 v1 plus 
A2 B2 plus A3 B3 and it goes up to A and B and And this representation is dot product where U is given by AI and V is given by VI and where I varying from 1 to N. Right? This is an inner product on RN and this RN with this inner product is usually referred as Euclidean N space. Particularly if we replace N with 3, for example, if we replace N with 3, then the vector space will be R cubed over the field of real numbers R and we restrict our this dot product as U dot V is equal to A1 V1 plus A2 V2 plus A3 V3. In case we represent the vector space as R cube, is a three dimensional vector space over the field of real numbers R. And in such cases, the product will be defined as u dot v is equal to a1 v1 plus a2 v2 plus a3 v3. And this inner product is usually known as a Euclidean 3 space because your dimension is 3. If we replace particularly n with 2, then such inner product is usually referred as an Euclidean 2 space if dimension is 2. Now the second case we consider the dot product in Cn where this capital C represents the set of complex number. Means here our vector space is defined over a field of complex number that is C. And our dot product is defined as u dot v is given by z1 which is the first element of this u vector. Here the vector u consists of j direct and the vector v consists of wi. Further, we can define our vector u as z1, z2, z3 and it goes up to zn. Similarly for v, we have representation w1, w2, w3 up to wn. So the dot product in cn is defined as u dot v which is given as z1 multiplied with a complex conjugate of w1 plus z2 complex conjugate of w2 plus z3 complex conjugate of w2 this bar represents the conjugate complex conjugate of w1 here w1 itself a complex number so w1 bar, w2 bar, w3 bar up to w1 bar represent their respective uh, complex conjugates so this type of dot product when we define as an this is an inner product on cn and the cn with this particular type of dot product or inner product is called unitary n space. So, right in case of a real number, we call Euclidean n space, while in case of complex, we call it unitary n space. This is the third uh, inner product which we define over a vector space which consists of matrices over R of m into n order matrices. Let us consider a vector space V over the field R and this V consists of all M into N order matrices. Let us consider two matrices capital A and capital B represent matrices of M into N, M into N order because V consists of M into N matrices over the field of real numbers. Then the following is an inner product particularly for vector space which consists of matrices of m into n order we have very specific inner product defined over this vector space and it is given by inner product of capital A comma cap capital B this represent a uh, inner product of matrices A comma B is equal to TR this TR is the notation for trace and you know what is trace? trace means uh, for example if you consider the matrix A with entries A1, A2, A3 and A4. This is a square matrix of 2 into 2 order. Then the trace TR of this square matrix A with the sum of principal diagonal elements. The trace of A is simply A1 plus A4. So in order to determine trace of any matrix, we simply add the principal diagonal elements of that matrix. Right? So here the inner product space of A comma B is given by trace of BT multiplied with A where A is our matrix of, uh, of M into N order 
and this B T, the T, the, the superscript T over B represents the transpose of matrix B. So when we multiply transpose of uh, matrix B with matrix A, and finally we get the matrix, and first we determine the trace of that matrix. So trace of B T A gives us the desired inner product of both the matrix A comma B. And where T R stands for trace, the sum of principal diagonal elements. Now, analogously, uh, U denotes the vector space of M into M matrices over C instead of R. In previous case, we discussed V is a vector space which consists of uh, M into M matrices over the field of real numbers R. Here, we discuss the U denotes the vector space and it is consists of M into M matrices over C. Then the following is an inner product in U. Inner product of A comma B is equal to trace of B star A. Right? Here B star this B star is as usual B star denotes the conjugate transpose of matrix B. B is the ordinary uh, M into M matrix, right? And B star is the notation for a conjugate to transpose of matrix B. So this is the desired inner product which we describe over a unitary space because here our vector space U is defined over a field of complex number C. So inner product A comma B is equal to trace of B star A or whatever B star complex conjugate of B when multiplied with A gives us a resulting matrix. And then we determine the transpose of that matrix, means we simply add the principal diagonal element of that matrix and which gives us our scalar quantity which is inner product of matrix A comma B. Now the fourth one, let V be a vector space of real continuous function on the interval t greater than or equal to a and less than or equal to b. So here the range of integration is varying from a to b and the following is an inner product we describe over f comma g. f and g both are real continuous function of t. So inner product of f comma g is given by integration a to b. Here the range of integration a to b because our function described in the interval t greater than or equal to a and less than or equal to b. So we just integrate the integrand which consists of product of two functions of t like ft and gt. So whatever that product in terms of t, we integrate with respect to t and finally we replace t with final limit b and the initial limit a. So the resulting resulting quantity will be a scalar one and which is our uh, scalar inner product. Uh, f comma g which belongs to our field. Now analogously if u denotes the vector space of complex continuous instead of real continuous function suppose we have a uh, complex continuous function with the same uh, real interval like t greater than or equal to a and less than or equal to b. In such cases then the following is an inner product on u which is described as inner product f comma g where f and g consist of t and we describe inner product of f and g as integration from a to b the range of integration is from a to b ft and complex conjugate of gt and we integrate with respect to t so in this case again we integrate the resulting function of t with respect to t and finally assign the upper limit and the lower limit so resulting quantity will be again a scalar one which belongs to uh, inner product of a comma g which belongs to our field. Now the fifth one, uh, let us consider a v, a vector space which consists of uh, infinite sequence of real numbers. Here we denote our sequence as ar. And this sequence of real number is a1, comma a2, comma a3 and it goes up to infinity, infinite number of terms are there. So let us consider a vector space V which consists of uh, infinite sequence of real numbers A1, A2 and particularly satisfy this particular condition means 
the summation the series i running from the summation i running from 1 to plus infinity i goes from 1 to infinity ai square is equal to the sum of a1 square plus a2 square plus a3 square and so on it goes up to infinite number of terms but the sum remains convergent the, the sum converges because the sum is ultimately remains less than infinity and that's why because it is less than infinity the sum converges, converges. and here we describe our addition and scalar multiplication uh, as a component wise if we add these two infinite sequence component vectors like a1, a2 dash dash up to infinity plus with another component v1, v2, v2 dash dash up to infinity the sum of these two is equal to sum of the force component of each factor a1 plus v1, a2 plus v2 and so on up to infinite, infinite number of terms so this represents the uh, addition of component wise and the second one is called a scalar multiplication where we just simply multiply with the scalar quantity k to the infinite sequence a1 comma a2 dash 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 up to infinity and which resultantly produce k times of a1 k times of a2 k times of a3 and so on up to infinity so if we define our addition and scalar multiplication over the infinite sequences in this particular manner Now we discuss uh, inner product is defined in V by this specific inner product space. This inner product space consists of infinite sequences like a1, a2 dash dash, comma, v1, v2 dash dash. These are the two infinite sequences, right? Now the inner product of these two infinite sequences described as a1 v1 plus a2 v2 plus and so on and again it goes up to infinity and because it, it, it remains, the sum of all the infinite terms remains less than infinity that's why the above sum converges absolutely for any pair of points we, did, uh, this, uh, we uh, choose in V by uh, space V as the inner product is well defined and this inner product is usually known as L2 space and which is also known as a Hilbert space It's quite simple the unit vector uh, when we say a particular vector which belongs to our vector space is an unit vector so let us consider a vector v is said to be a unit vector or a normalized vector if we determine its norm means if we consider a vector v and if we find its norm if norm of v and norm of vector v is exactly equal to 1 or in an alternative way we can also say if inner product of v comma v is equal to 1 in both the cases we say the vector v is a unit vector because its norm is equal to 1 so any vector having a length 1 or a norm 1 is called a unit vector or a normalized vector one can also say a normalized vector now there is a norm every non-zero vector u which belongs to v can be normalized by setting a v is equal to u divided by its norm so if u is a non-zero vector provided u must be a non-zero vector and we can easily normalize vector u with the help of the setting v is equal to u upon norm of u using this formula we can easily normalize any vector v now we discuss the distance actually the non-negative real number the non-negative real number which we describe as d of u comma b the u and b are two vectors which belongs to our vector space is equal to norm of v minus u see the norm of v minus u is the result desired the, the distance between these two vectors u and v so it's called the distance between u and v so in order to determine distance between two vectors u and v we simply determine the norm of their difference v minus u in order to decide. and this, is, this remains a non-negative real number this is a very important inequality which is known as Cauchy-Schwarz inequality the 
following formula and all the Cauchy's Schwarz inequality and is used in many branches of mathematics means for any vectors u and v which belongs to vector space this is universal that the mod value of inner product of u comma v vector u comma v remains less than equal to norm product of their individual norms means norm of u multiplied with norm of v this is a well known Cauchy Schwarz inequality and according to this inequality if we determine the modulus value or absolute value of inner product of u comma v two vectors which belongs to v it remains less than equal to product of their individual norms norm of u dot norm of v now we go to the definition of orthogonality what do we mean by orthogonality of two vectors which belongs to vector space so let v be an inner product space let us consider inner product space v means v is a vector space having an inner product feature that's why it is called inner product space the vectors u and v which belongs to v are said to be orthogonal if their inner product vanishes means inner product is equal to zero so whenever inner product of two vectors is equal to zero we can say yes both the vectors are orthogonal so the relation is clearly symmetric also means if u is orthogonal to v then automatically v is again orthogonal to u also because if you consider u is orthogonal to v that's where this inner product of u comma v is equal to zero and let us consider if u is orthogonal to v then now we start with this time we start with inner product of v comma u instead of u comma v so inner product of v comma u according to the i2 definition of inner product we can easily write v comma u as a conjugate of u comma v and in this case it is given u is orthogonal to v so we can easily replace inner product of u comma v with zero and it gives us a zero conjugate and zero conjugate remains zero so finally we observe inner product of v comma u is also zero so at the same time if some vector is orthogonal to some other vector the, the, another, the other vector is also orthogonal to the same vector so u if u and v are orthogonal then automatically v and u are also orthogonal and there is a one vector which belongs to our inner product space the zero vector the zero represents the zero vector which belongs to our inner product space is always orthogonal to every vector which belongs to v let us consider an arbitrary vector l v the small v is any arbitrary vector which belongs to our inner product space let us consider small v is a member arbitrary vector which represent each and every vector of our inner product space now uh, here this is scalar zero right and this is a zero vector which is member of v the zero vector is always orthogonal to each and every vector of v and which we can easily prove if we start with the uh, inner product of zero vector comma v this is equivalent to this zero vector can be written as a scalar zero into vector v because the resulting quantity remains vector quantity if scalar is zero or either vector is zero the product will be zero means if we choose a into zero vector the output remains zero vector and if you consider a scalar zero multiplied with vector zero some another vector v the resultant quantity remains zero vector so either vector zero or a scalar zero if we product two quantities and get a zero vector definitely either a scalar zero or a vector zero so we can easily replace the vector zero with consider as a scalar zero multiplied with vector v and the output is automatically zero vector into zero scalar into vector v gives us a zero vector and further this can be written as by using the property of inner product because this is the inner product space so it always follows that this vector space always follows the inner product so zero scalar into vector v comma v can be written as zero times scalar multiplied with v comma v and finally this is equal to scalar zero so this shows the zero vector is always orthogonal to every vector of v because we consider v as an arbitrary vector and finally we prove when we 
find the inner product of this zero vector with any other vector of v, it produces zero. And when inner product of two vector gives zero, this shows both are orthogonal. So this zero vector is orthogonal to each and every vector of our inner product space. Now we can now we discuss a remark. Uh, if V is a real inner product space, real inner product space means uh, inner product space uh, in which a uh, vector space is defined on a real grid. So then the angle theta between two non-zero vectors u and v, which belongs to v, is defined as cos theta is equal to inner product of u v u comma v divided by product of their individual norms, norm of u multiplied with norm of v. Through this formula we can easily find the angle between any two non-zero vectors with the help of this formula. So by the Cauchy's false inequality, we know that cos theta line between minus 1 and plus 1. And so the angle theta always exists in this case and we observe that u and v are orthogonal if and only if they are perpendicular. Perpendicular means if we replace our angle theta, this angle theta with pi by 2 value. If we consider theta as a 90 degree. And clearly 90, cos 90 gives us 0. And this individual norms when multi cross multiply with 0 become vanished. And finally we get uh, inner product of u comma v is equal to 0. Because cos pi by 2 become vanished and 0. So this conclusion says that u and v both are orthogonal if and only if our angle theta is pi by two. So this is the desired condition that u and v are orthogonal if and only if they are perpendicular that is theta is equal to pi by two. So this is vice versa. If u and v are orthogonal then clearly they are perpendicular if they are perpendicular then clearly u and v are orthogonal. Now the next definition is uh, orthonormal set. Now in order to define orthonormal set, first of all we discuss orthogonality, orthogonal sets. A set UI, this UI of vectors in V is said to be an orthogonal. When we say uh, some given vector, there's some given set UI is said to be an orthogonal if each and every vector of the set are orthogonal to each other. Then only we say yes, the given set of vector is orthogonal. So a set UI of vectors in B is said to be orthogonal if its distinct elements, means repeated elements are not permitted. We just consider only a, always a distinct elements or distinct vectors. So a set UI of vectors in V is said to be ortho orthogonal if its distinct elements are orthogonal. That is, if we determine the inner product of vector UI with UJ, where clearly I is not equal to J because here we consider both the vectors are distinct. So I is not equal to J. So whenever their distinct, distinct elements are orthogonal means their inner product vanishes means their inner product is equal to 0 and particularly when the set UI is said to be an orthonormal set. So there is a slight difference between an orthogonal and orthonormal. If you describe an orthonormal set, then we put one more additional feature to the orthogonal set. If each UI has length 1, means the set UI consists of vectors like u1, u2, u3. If each UI has length 1, means each UI is a unit normalized vector. In such particular cases, when the vectors are orthogonal as well as their norm or they are normalized or their length is just 1 or norm is 1, at that time we say the set is orthonormal. So for orthonormal set, your set must be orthogonal as well as normalized set. It means length of each vector in that case must be 1. So the inner product of ui comma uj is equal to delta ij. And this delta ij is either 0 or 1. Delta ij is 0 only when i is not equal to j because 
all distinct elements are orthogonal, so clearly the inner product of ey and gz become vanish zero, and particularly when i equal to j, when the, the length is just one, so ui comma uj gives us delta ij and delta ij become one only whenever i is equal to j. Means inner product of u1 with u1 gives us one. Inner product of u2 with u2 gives us one. And any other inner product like u1, u2 become values. So these are the desired conditions for orthonormal sites. Means your set must be orthogonal and each factor must possess a length 1. Now this is a remark and orthonormal set can always be obtained from an orthogonal uh, set of non-zero factors by normalizing each factor. Let us consider an example of R cube. This R cube stands for an inner product space with dimension 3, where R is the field of real numbers. And because it's a 3 space, so vectors cons consist of A, B, C. Right? Let us consider the usual basis. The usual basis of Euclidean 3 space are well known E1, E2, and E3. If you consider the 3 space Euclidean, then the E1 is denoted by 1, 0, 0, E2 is given by 0, 1, 0, and E3 consists of 0, 0, and 1. These are the standard basis or a usual basis for an RQ, E1, E2, and E3. Now, it is clear that if we determine the inner product of E1 with E1, clearly it gives us 1 because here, we multiply 1 with 1, then 0 with 0, and 0 with 0, and finally we add them. So, resultant quantity remains 1. In the next case, if you find the inner product of E2 and E2, again you get 1. When you find inner product of E3 with E3, it remains 1 only. And if you find the inner product of EI, EJ, and where i is not equal to j means in this case we consider e1 with e3 or even with e2 not even even because even even we already consider so whenever i is equal to j there are our usual basis elements e1 e1 e2 e2 and e3 e3 gives us unity of 1 means the length of each factor is 1 and EI, comma, EJ, when we find the inner product of EI, EJ, whenever I is not equal to J, it's clearly zero. This, let us consider an example of E1 with E2. If we consider the inner product of E1 with E2, then clearly 1 multiply with 0, 1 multiply with 0, plus 0 multiply with 1, and finally 0 with 0, and which gives us 0. So if we consider E1, E2 or E1, E3 or E2, E3 distinct vectors, then clearly their inner product become vanished. And this shows orthogonal, means each vector orthogonal to the other vectors. But whenever we operate E1 with E1 or E2 with E2 or E3 with E3, it produces 1 because they possess this norm or a length 1. So that is E1, that's why E1, E2, E3 is an orthonormal basis. It's not an ordinary basis because it possesses a property of orthonormal set. So it's an orthonormal basis of RQ. And more generally, the usual basis of RS or CN is orthonormal for every n. Means if we consider R2, if we particularly replace n with 2, which represents a Euclidean 2 space, which we represent by R square, where R square is a real inner product space with field R having a dimension 2. And in this case, we have two bases 1, 0, 0, 1. This is E1 and E2. And again, clearly, if you find 
inner product of e1 with e1 and clearly it is 1 e2 with e2 again is 1 but when we find the inner product of e1 with e2 in this case i is not equal to j so it gives us 0 so again this usual basis more generally the usual basis of r and cn are orthonormal for every because their norms and length of each factor is 1 and they are orthogonal to each other. Here we have a lemma and another an orthonormal set u1, u2 up to ur which consists of r vectors is linearly independent and for every vector which v belongs to capital V, the vector w exists and which is described as v minus inner product of v u1 multiplied with u1 minus v comma u2 multiplied with u2 and so on and it goes up to minus of v comma ur multiplied with ur is always orthogonal to each other each of the ui this, this factor w is always orthogonal to ui whether it is u1 u2 u3 for every factor v belongs to v there exists a vector w such that this is orthogonal to every ui thank you